I want us to look at Revelation chapter 6, the sixth chapter of Revelation. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. And um, quite a big subject. And so I want us to just look at some of these verses. And I want to tie this in with what's happening on the earth right now. Now, I'm not saying that what's happening on the earth right now is the fulfillment of this. What I am saying is that there's a pattern developing on the earth right now. Whether that has been deliberately contrived by the globalist cabal or whether it's just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pattern, if you like, spiritually. But what I'm saying to you is we can see right now the four horsemen of the apocalypse riding in the earth. Okay, so let's look at this. From verse 1, Revelation 6, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. Now if you know that song, Johnny Cash, The Man Comes Around, uh, you'll be familiar with these verses. Um, it says, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Now I, I've... I've covered this in a previous uh, podcast, uh, and uh, it's quite powerful stuff. Um, but anyway, let's read on. It says here, and that was the first seal, the conqueror is the head, and I have my Bible, the white horse. The second seal is verse 3. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. Another horse fiery red went out. This is conflict on earth, folks, okay? And it says, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. So, uh, number one is a white horse, and that signifies plague, okay? That's plague. And the second horse, the red horse, signifies war. So you've got plague and war. Now we're going to look at the third one, the third seal. When he opened the third seal, verse 5, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Now, the third seal, the third horse, um, is the horse, a black horse, and that is famine. So the three horses we're, we've looked at so far, plague, war, and famine. Folks, that's what we have on the earth right now. That's what we have had. We had plague to begin with, two years of a pandemic, and then now we have war, war in Ukraine, uh, peace from the earth. You see, if this war escalates and goes nuclear, there's going to be a lot of deaths. Um, and so we have, we've had plague, we've, we've, we've now got war, and this is what's coming. And folks, it's already started, scarcity or famine. It's already started. Uh, energy prices going up, food prices going up, threatened shortages. Now, whether or not they're manufacturing these three things, uh, is up for debate or, or exploiting these three things. But folks, that's what we have on the earth right now. We've, we've got plague, we've got war, and we are coming into the season now where there's going to be famine as well. A lot of people, you just need to switch on. Them. In fact, I looked on television last night and you, these documentary programs and different channels and different programs about the same thing. That which is coming in the earth right now, rocketing prices, the cost of living going sky high, um, energy prices going through the roof. Folks, it's with us. Um, and of course now, and it's interesting because it's speaking here uh, about um, do not harm the oil and the wine. Well, you know, in the local supermarkets here in Glasgow, they're now limiting the supply of cooking oil. You can only buy two bottles per customer. Uh, and when they do stuff like that, it actually creates an image of scarcity and shortage anyway, so you want to get your hands on more. So people go in 
and they'll, they'll, they'll go in one day and get their two bottles, they'll go in the following day and get two bottles. Folks, this stuff's with us. This stuff is with us right now. So whether or not this is a fulfillment right now, a lot of people think it is, but what I'm trying to say to you here is this, is these three horsemen are riding in the earth. Now, what's the fourth horseman? Uh, we'll read it. It says, and the fourth seal uh, here is headed up in my Bible, widespread death on earth. Watch this. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was death. And hell or Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, 25% of the population of earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Now, I, I, I need to say this. I don't understand. I, I don't fully uh, know, should I say, whether or not that power given over the fourth of the earth means that a fourth of the earth are actually going to die. I think what it means is that that could be the limit that they have, that they can only kill 25% of the earth. But you know, you could kill a whole bunch of folks right now with nuclear war. And then of course, with nuclear war, you're going to get plague anyway, you're going to get scarcity anyway. So all these things are coming together. These things aren't just separate events. They are, what I would say, they're convergent. And they, they are integrated together, these four things. Well, well the three horses, uh, plague, war, and famine, resulting in the fourth horse, which is death, or the fourth seal, which is death. Now, I'm, I, don't, I don't purport to be one of these prophetic guys, or a you know, revelation expert, stuff like that. I'm only looking at what's going on in the earth right now through prophetic eyes and see, well, we've got plague, we've got war, and we've now got, we've got famine or scarcity. Folks, these things are with us. And people have already died. And people are dying. Millions will die. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is, can we avert some of that? Can we prevent some of that? Can we pray some of this stuff off? Is that limit of a fourth of the earth something that we can really make a big dent in through decree and prayer? I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't have all the answers here, okay? And I'm, I'm wary of people who say they do. But folks, we're living in these times right now, and it's so important for us to understand because, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm looking at everything through a filter or a prism of Isaiah chapter 60. To me, Isaiah 60 is God's alternative to going through this hell and earth. And we can choose to live there like the... The Israelites lived in the land of Goshen while they were in Egypt. Uh, but they came out of Goshen into the promised land. We can't stay in Goshen. And uh, you know, we, we ought not have this idea that all that God has for us is Goshen. Okay, the promised land is still ours to obtain. And I believe the promised land is Isaiah 60. It's the alternative. I believe there will be geographical locations in earth. I believe Britain is purposed of God to be one of them. Scotland uh, and the whole of the, the British Isles, in fact. I believe that America is purposed. I believe that New Zealand, Canada, Australia, five haven nations the Lord showed me way back at the start of all this mess. And I believe that God's purpose is that we be haven nations. Now, whether or not we step into that, you know, it's... Maybe just God's purpose, but you know, we have to, there's a condition to it. Uh, you know, it's not just automatic, because if, it, if, it, if it's automatic, then we don't really need to bother about praying and speaking and praying and decreeing stuff. We just, yeah, well, God's going to do it all anyway. No, we've got, us, we've got to go into this with intentionality. We've got to speak it, decree it, declare, proclaim, pray, and intercede and give thanks that we would enter into Isaiah chapter 60 and, and walk in it. The awakened economy, the alternative uh, system. Now, well, let me just say this to you. It's not as simple as saying, well, we need to come out of Babylon because um, to a certain extent we have. We came out of the EU. Uh, but it's not so much about 
coming out of Babylon, it's about getting Babylon out of us. Okay, getting Babylon out of our country. Getting Babylon, i.e. globalist thinking, globalist ideology, idolatry, uh, out of our parliaments, out of number 10 Downing Street, out of uh, our devolved parliaments, our councils, because our parliaments and councils are overrun and infested with globalists and people with a woke agenda. We've got to get them out. We've got to get rid of this idea of wokeness and enter into the Great Awakening. It's not the great reset that God has for us of Klaus Schwab and these other globalists. It's the great awakening of the 21st century, which will, if you're a post-millennialist, probably usher in the start of a glorious age of the gospel. If you're a premillennialist, it'll at least give you a short period of time on the earth before Jesus returns. But it will be a time of glory. Now, I'm not going to tell you what eschatological system or thinking to have, you, you work that out between you and the Holy Spirit. What I am saying to you is that regardless of whether it's a short time or a long, a much longer period, a millennial period even, we need to be believing God for an age of glory, and a golden age of glory, an awakening that will turn this nation upside down, will make Britain Albion again, the Holy Isle, set apart for God's purpose. We need to be getting into that. Folks, the four horsemen are riding the earth right now, but God has an alternative. And as I keep saying, and I'm going to keep saying, God's alternative isn't an alternative as such. God's system, God's kingdom, God's way of doing things is the real deal. That's, that's the real system on earth. It's the other stuff that's the alternative, and it's an alternative we need to reject and deny its right to um, impose itself upon us. Okay, so that's where we are, and we see these four horsemen riding the earth. Of course, the fifth seal speaks about uh, the martyrdom of the saints, and then the sixth seal is... is a great earthquake, cosmic disturbances, the sun becoming black. And of course, there's a lot of this stuff goes together. It's not just necessarily chronologically one follows another so much as it all converges together, if that makes sense. But of course, we've, we have had plague, war, and now famine in chronological order. But the next one is death. Now, so how do we pray? How do we... How do we react to this or respond to it? How do we respond to this? Well, we respond to it, quite frankly, uh, the same as, as we, we always do or always should, which is that we stay constant. We stand our ground. We stay constant in fervent prayer. We stay constant in meditating His Word. That's on an individual basis, but also on a collective basis, on a congregational basis as the church, as the remnant body within the earth. We should be speaking and proclaiming God's purpose into things. You see, uh, an authentic prophetic utterance will align earth, will align the nations with God's purpose for earth and for the nations. And so we need to be speaking, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Britain as it is in heaven, thy will be done in America, as it is in heaven, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. We need to align the earth we live in, because we're here in physical bodies, but we're spirit beings, and, and we're also seated with Christ in heavenly places. So we are, our biolocality gives us the authority to speak from heaven into earth, and also the access from earth into heaven as priests. So from heaven, we, we function as kings, and on earth we function um, as priests in that we, we minister to the people, but we also intercede here on earth for heaven's uh, authority, heaven's intervention. And, and so, folks, that's our job. That's our role. That's our function, is to stand between heaven and earth and be channels through which God will pour kingdom his kingdom, his kingdom authority, his economy, the economy 
of abundance. You see, what you have to understand is, is that at the heart of all this, plague, war, famine, death, it's a spirit of poverty. The devil will always try to impoverish man. You'll own nothing and be happy, the globalists tell us. No, well, owning nothing is poverty. So God's economy is one of abundance. The wealth of a nation shall come to you. The abundance of the economy shall be turned to you. So we reject the, the economy of scarcity and we receive the economy of God's kingdom, which is always abundance, abundant life, superabundant supply, miraculous supply if it has to be, but the blessing of Abraham working in our lives and through us to the nation. So that's, that's where we are right now. And we have to be king priests in the Melchizedek order to minister to the people and also minister to the Lord and receive from him the power, the dunamis power, the exousia authority to change and transform things on earth. Heaven invading earth is what we're about. Penetrating and taking over the seven mountains of culture and being God's ecclesia, his governmental assembly in the earth. That's, that's our job. It's not changed. It's always been our job. It's just that revelation of these things is superabounding to us now. And so we need to start acting on it and, and no longer be the church as in Sardis, the place of death, uh, uh, that has a, a ministry of death. For all that there's great things in Sardis, God's summation of it is it's dead. And you can refurbish it, you can remix it, you can, you can uh, you know, uh, modernize it, you can put down great drop screens uh, in your church, you can get smoke machines, you can wear your skinny jeans, folks. None of that is going to change Sardis. It's Philadelphia that God is going to change and transform society through. So let's be that church, the church of brotherly love. And folks, when you see hatred of the brethren, understand this. That's old wineskin because it's Sardis. Okay, where you see uh, people being despised, for being Christians, and I'm not talking about out there, the world hates us. I'm talking about inside church. You see, they overcome uh, the accuser of the brethren. That's the great end time revelation of the blood of Jesus and the overcoming power of the blood. He it overcomes the accuser of the brethren. Folks, the accuser of the brethren isn't out there. He's in church. And where you see that spirit of attacking Christians attacking leaders, okay? Well, we've, we've looked at that. We've looked at Jezebel, Babylon, all these things. The blood of Jesus helps us to overcome these things. And it also helps to take us into the kingdom dimension, the kingdom reality, the Isaiah chapter 60 paradigm that God would have us walk in that then leads into Isaiah 61, where it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to poor folks and to bring healing and set the captives free. We're about that in the earth right now. We're God's remnant people. And it's so important to understand that we must function as that, as king priests of the Melchizedek order. Well, the Lord bless you uh, until next time. But I want to say this to you, the four horsemen, are riding the earth. It's time for you and I, not just to strap on our weaponry, our battle armor, but also to take our seats in heavenly places with Christ, with intentionality, purpose, and say and speak into the earth the purpose and will of God. And you'll find that in his book. So if you're not in his book, you are not functioning in the purpose of the Lord. Well, the Lord bless you. Until next time.